This will be beneficial for all of you who are doing an accounting cycle problem for a sole proprietor. We will walk through an example of an accounting cycle for a sole proprietor. First of all, we're going to have an investment by the owner. Now, those of you who learned um, the basic journal entries by looking at a corporation, normally you would have credited common stock, but when you have a sole proprietor, you're going to be crediting capital, the capital of the owner. Next, we have a purchase of supplies for cash, a purchase of equipment for cash, the purchase of supplies on account using credit, crediting accounts payable. Next, we're going to earn some consulting revenue, and we'll always look at how we are paid when we earn consulting revenue. Will we pay it in cash? Or are we given a promise to pay or a trade receivable or accounts receivable? In this instance, they were paid in cash. Next, we have rent expense that was paid salary expense that was paid, and then we have consulting revenue and rental revenue that the sole proprietor earned. They weren't paid immediately. They received an accounts receivable, a promise to pay instead. Subsequent to that, the um, customer paid off their receivable, so the company received cash, the sole proprietor received cash, and now the account receivable no longer exists for this customer. Next, they're going to pay down on their accounts payable in cash. And now they're going to, the sole proprietor is going to withdraw cash for personal use, which is permissible for a sole proprietor. Those of you who studied corporations, this would have been a dividend, but for those of you who studied sole proprietors, it's a withdrawal, which is a debit, and it's also a owner's equity account. Next, we're going to receive some cash for some earned, unearned revenue for some future services that we're going to perform on behalf of a customer. So this is a liability, unearned revenue. Next, we're going to prepay insurance coverage in the amount of $2,400. We're going to purchase some more supplies for cash, pay our utilities expense, and pay another salary. Let's look at each one of these journal entries and how they interface with the general ledger or we're going to simulate the general ledger using T accounts. So we'll go through each one of these individually, look at on the right the uh, T account and on the left will be the journal entry. I'll just take you through each one of these. Pause if you need to. See how each one of these journal entries are affecting these accounts. See the accounts receivable is now zero. Here I have depicted the T accounts in the general ledger. This represents all of the assets. This represents all of the liabilities. And to the far right, I have all of the owner's equity accounts, which are capital, withdrawals, revenue, rental revenue, and then the expenses. Income statement accounts, income statement accounts, statement of owner's equity account, Statement of Owner's Equity and Balance Sheet Account. And I will show you how you will prepare financial statements for a sole proprietor. So now let's look at the interface of the unadjusted trial balance with the ending balances for each one of these accounts. These are before adjustments are made. So this is the unadjusted trial balance. And it has there all of the ending balances from all of the T accounts. So take a moment to look at this and pause if you need to. Each are on their respective debit and credit sides of the unadjusted trial balance. 
Next, we're going to look at the unadjusted trial balance and our next step in the accounting cycle is we need to make month-end adjusting journal entries. So adjusting journal entries are internal. The journal entries we made previously are considered to be external with parties outside of the company. Now we have six adjusting journal entries. Four of these are going to be related to the passage of time. The fifth one is going to be related to a matching of expenses with income. And the sixth one is looking to see if there is any revenue that we've earned that we have not yet been paid for. So this first adjusting journal entry represents the passage of time with respect to prepaid insurance. The next one is the supplies used during the month taking a supply count. Again with the passage of time using up supplies. With the equipment, we're going to depreciate it over the passage of time. And then unearned revenue, we will look at that based upon the passage of time to see if we've earned any of that revenue. Next, we will look at the last payroll date and look at the end of the month, the date the financial statements are prepared to see if there is any unpaid and unaccrued for employee salary expenses that we need to make certain that we match against the revenue that we're earning for the period. And lastly, we're looking at any jobs that are completed at or near um, the financial statement date, substantially completed, to see if we should not record an accounts receivable and revenue associated with that. Now let's look at the journal entries. Again, pause, look at the calculation, and look at the form of the journal entry. As always, when we come to an adjusting journal entry, one of them is going to be related to an income statement account, and another one is going to be related to a balance sheet account. Income statement account, balance sheet asset. Income statement expense, balance sheet supplies. Income statement expense, accumulated depreciation, a contra asset account. So that's balance sheet two as well. Unearned consulting revenue, balance sheet account, a liability, consulting revenue, an income statement account, salary expense, income statement, salaries payable, balance sheet, accounts receivable, balance sheet, and consulting revenue, income statement. Now let's see how each one of these adjusting journal entries will interface with our T accounts and update them so that we will now have an adjusted trial balance, and, uh, well adjusted balances in our general ledger accounts represented by T accounts. So let's look at each one of these, see where they land. So those represent our six adjusting journal entries. Now we have an adjusted trial balance. So let's look at our ending balances in our general ledger, our T account, and then let's look at our adjusted trial balances, seeing that everything has been appropriately represented in their correct debit and credit columns. They all look like they have normal balances, and the debits equal the credits. Now when you're at the stage of having an adjusted trial balance, it's time to prepare the financial statements for sole proprietor. So let's look at this. This is our unadjusted trial balance. We're going to prepare the income statement first, all our revenue, all of our expenses. Here's our net income. Now. For a sole proprietor, instead of having a statement of retained earnings, it's going to be a statement of owner's equity. We'll start with the beginning capital for the owner, add any investments made during the period, add any net income added during the period, which we got from the income statement. Remember, we prepare financial statements in a certain order, income statement, statement of owner's equity, and then the balance sheet. So we get the income from the income statement. This will be the subtotal of all of the additions for the month. I'm going to subtract any withdrawals, and we'll wind up with ending capital. This ending capital amount is both on the statement of owner's equity, and it will also be on the balance sheet. This is the only account that will be on both uh, on two financial statements. Then let's look at what's on the balance sheet. 
all of our assets. Here we have our equipment minus our accumulated depreciation. So we have the net value of the asset added to all of the assets. Then we have all of our liabilities and our capital. Our assets equal our liabilities plus owner's equity. Now we're ready to close the books. So we have our adjusted trial balance and now we need to look at the entries needed to reset income expense and this should be withdrawals to zero. So we'll look at the entries to close the books. Remember we're closing all of the temporary accounts which are the income statement accounts as well as the statement of owner's equity account. If we go back and look at the financial statements we know that this is for the month ended and the statement of owner's equity is also for the month ended. So both the income statement and statement of owner's equity are for the month ended, meaning that they'll have to be reset so they can accumulate new information as of January 1st, but the balance sheet is as of a specific date and time. It will be as of January 1st on the day after this. And I see I have a bunch of typos and misspelled words here, so you'll just have to forgive me. All right, let's look at our closing entries. So first thing we want to do is close all our revenue accounts. So presently they're credit balanced, uh, credit based, right? So we'll have to debit those and we'll debit them and then we're going to close them out to a temporary account that we will use just for the income statement accounts called income summary. We won't use income summary when we talk about closing out the accounts associated with the statement of owner's equity. So debit all the revenue and credit it to income summary. Next, since all of our expenses are debit based, we're going to credit all of our expenses and debit income summary. Next, we're going to take the balance and income summary and close it out to capital. And I'll show you this with reference to T accounts. But right now we're just walking through the closing entries themselves. And lastly, we're going to close the withdrawal account to capital. It's debit based, so we're going to credit it and debit capital. Now let's look at it in reference to, and these are just the, uh, the um, accounts that we're going to close. It doesn't represent the entire general ledger. So the consulting revenue and the rental revenue being debited, income summary being credited. You can see that. Next we have all of our expenses. We can see the ending balances for this is all zero. You can see that up for revenue too. And then we are going to debit income summary. And we said whenever we do closing entries, we always want to balance after we've done the first two entries so we know what we have to close out to capital. So at present, our balance is 3785 so now our next journal entry will be closing out the income summary which was used to close out the income statement accounts closing it out to capital we see now that we have a zero balance in income summary and now lastly we want to look at closing out withdrawals so withdrawals debit base credit them zero balance we're going to have a debit to capital out of all of our debits, out of all of our credits, take the smaller from the larger, and this will be our ending balance. And if you were to compare these to the financial statements that we prepared, you would find that this represents the income, this represents all of the expenses, this represents net income, which we're closing out to the statement of owner's equity. This represents the beginning balance or the investments that were made during the period. So this is the addition of net income, subtracting out withdrawals and giving us our ending balance in the statement of owner's equity. So now let's look at all of these balances and see what is on our post-closing trial balance. Well, all of our withdrawals are, are gone, so it's zeroed out. Revenue zeroed out. All of our expenses are zeroed out, so they have all been zeroed out. And capital has a new balance. So we can see from our T accounts, capital has a new balance. And all that remains on our post-closing trial balance are balance sheet accounts. These are all... In, uh, accounts representing things that exist and will continue to exist. So cash exists, accounts receivable, supplies, prepaid insurance, equipment, accumulated depreciation, our accounts, pay we still owe our vendors, uh, our salaries are still payable, uh, we still have the um, unearned consulting revenue we owe our client, and now we have a new balance in capital.